said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down, and break it in, the, in, in pieces. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall arise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue the kings, and he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hands until a time and times and the, and the dividing of time. So y'all don't don't spend so much time focusing on who the little horn and all that, that the horns and stuff for and the kings are. But look what he said he will do. He said he shall speak great words against who? The most high. I'm trying to find how do I say this. Um y'all remember when the Bible says that you are either gathering or you are what? Scattering. Scattering. Is it possible to scatter people in God's name? Yes, if it's misused. Yes. Amen. I'm going to tell y'all why I'm asking it, because remember the Bible said that they will feel like they were doing God a favor. The only way they can feel like they're doing God a favor is they if they feel like they're pleasing God. All right? So now why am I stressing this? A lot of times when we're looking for the enemy, y'all, we're looking out in the world. What if the enemy is going to be even closer than that? Right. In your own house, bro. Yeah. Yes, ma'am, Sister Francesca. That's the main deception. You look at the Catholic Church, the main deception, the people, the Catholic Church, the regular folks, they think they're doing God's will. And that's how the enemy deceiving people by disguising it as if it's God's will. Yes. I can't get in so many details. I don't want to branch off like I wanted to talk a little bit about how the word love is used, being used today. It's very broad. Yeah, and it's very broad, but it's not the love of God. But yet it does feel good. It does feel mushy, but it's not the love of God. You That's know? right. And anybody that talks against love, you seem like something wrong with you, you know? So, but anyways, let me just stay on topic. He said, he shall speak great words against the most high. Y'all, if you speak anything different than what God is speaking, you are against him. Now, Amen. for those of y'all that was on Bible study on Tuesday, I showed y'all the article that came out just on the 29th, just the other day, where he was saying, it's okay for same-sex marriage. Except for the Africans who say it's against their culture. Well, against their culture or not, if you are supposed to be the, a leader of God's people, what does their culture have to do with what God says? Exactly. And so you create a document okaying something that is what? Against the most high. I can't remember what it was called. It was called a spirit of something. We read it. But he created an actual document telling all of the priests that it's okay to do it. He said he shall wear out who? The saints of the most high. Who does the Bible, what, did, what did the Bible say the saints were? Who did the Bible say the saints were? Those who keep the commandments. There you go. Mother Barbara said it. They keep the commandments of... Everybody, make sure you understand this. Having a church membership don't make you a saint. The Bible says the saints are they that keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Do y'all know how you get your testimony? Pass the test. You got to pass the test. You got to stand on what Jesus said. You got to hold on and you got to go through some storms in the name of Jesus. And how many of us have went through some things holding on to Jesus? Amen. 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 And we, 
And when we come out on the other side of it, we couldn't give nobody glory but him, could we? Amen. Man, let me tell you something. Right. Yes. Those of you that have, and I want us all to have that testimony. If you don't have it yet, y'all, let me tell you, this would be like passing some major exam. This would open doors up for you to understand things you never had. But those of you that know what I'm talking about when I say, it's one thing to have a testimony, but it's another thing to be keeping his commandments while you get your testimony. See, like some people had a testimony of God healed me, right? Some people had a testimony of God gave me a place to stay. He helped me to find the car. All of those are testimonies, right? But that's not the testimony of when you have suffered trying to stay in the wheel. Right. Amen. That's a different testimony. When you have tried to stay in, when you had to hold on and stay in the will of God until your change come, that's a different kind of testimony. Amen. So watch this. He says, Amen. he's going to wear out the saints of the most high. And what is he going to do, y'all? Think to change times and laws. Is that not what we just saw the Pope do? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Is the Pope the ruler of, of the fourth kingdom that the Bible said in Daniel would be the most dominant influence? Look what it said. That fourth beast, which we know is the what? Fourth kingdom on the earth. It shall be different from all the other kingdoms. What shall it do? It shall devour what? The whole earth. The whole earth. Which kingdom? The fourth kingdom. It's the one that's going to devour the earth. It shall tread down and break pieces. He said the rule is going to speak against the most high, work out the saints, and he will try an attempt to change times and laws. We just saw an article, July 29th, 2024, changing a major commandment of God that has been in place forever. Not only is it major, it's contrary to nature. So let's move. Let's go over to the New Testament. Let's go over to the book of Revelations. Chapter 6. Do you, who, does everybody remember when we were reading in, in, in Daniel 12 that God told Daniel to seal up the vision in a book. Mm. Y'all don't remember that? Let me show it to you real quick. So you you gotta you gotta remember that in order to get what we're about to look at. Let's see here. Uh everlasting. Let me get to it. Yeah, brother Ben, start at verse number one, and we're gonna come down to like verse number four, should be probably enough. Yes, sir. <laughs> And at, at that time shall Michael stand up. The great prince was standing for the children of thy people. And right. there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that asleep in the dust of the earth shall, shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall sh sh shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn may be, excuse me, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. But thou, uh -huh. O Daniel, shut up thy words and seal the book. Even to the time of the end, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. So y'all get what he's saying. God is giving Daniel some insight on what it shall be like in the last days. He said the wise people will be the ones turning people to righteousness. Right? He said, but Daniel, what I want you to do, though, I want you to shut these words up and seal it in the book. Seal it in the book even till when? To the end. Of time. Very good. Y'all got that? 
Mm-hmm. Read so verse what 80. book is that? What book is it? We're about to look at it. Oh. We're about to look at it in just a second. Read verse 89, Brother Ben. And I heard, but I understood not. Then said, I, oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? When he said, go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. I'm sorry, I should have had him read seven. Read seven, brother. Man. And I heard the man clothed in, clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever, that it shall be for a time, times and a half. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. Okay, so let me uh, do this so we'll have everybody on the same page. Okay, y'all, so uh, I'm very aware and sensitive to the fact that prophecy it's hard to understand. It reads so weird. All these times and times, times, and all of that stuff. I know we don't get it. But here's what we can get. We can get that Daniel is prophesying about the end of times. Amen? Amen. All right. Now, any of us that have been in church, we've always heard that we better repent because we living in the what? Last days. The last mm-hmm. days, another way of saying that is end of time. Okay. Now, why is prophecy so important? True prophets give word to God's people, gives them an advantage, gives them insight on things to come. Prepare us. They're preparers, right? Mm-hmm. How many of y'all would like to know in advance, you know, those of y'all that, that you know, there are people that would love to know what the Powerball number was going to be in advance. Is that for a mm-hmm. second? Mm-hmm. Right, now, yeah. now, now, if, if somebody was giving out the Powerball numbers tonight in advance, would you want them to say it out loud or would you want them to kind of be private about it? Mm-mm, be private. Be private. I need that. Reading, amen. When you're reading prophecy, know that you are reading a private message, and you can open this book up to everybody, but only folks that have the Spirit of God would even be able to get something out of it. That's right. It's 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 like a secret message, right? And so, what I want us to take from tonight is, y'all. You know, we started out talking about what Jeremiah was saying when he said, "If you can't run with the Heart with the footman, right? How can you even contend with the horseman? Well, Daniel is telling us about horseman stuff that's coming. And what he said in verse 7, he said he's seeing a vision. That's what I need y'all to know. It's just a vision. It's not literal, but it's a vision God is showing him. And what I love, I don't know if we went past it, but Daniel said, I didn't understand. Yeah, it's here. Watch this. He said, I heard the man that was clothed in linen which was up on the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, he swore by him that liveth forever that it shall be for a time, times, and a half. Watch this. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, that's talking to us, then all these things shall be finished. So what has to be done first? God's people have to be scattered. Well, they can't come together. Mm. Okay, so now, wait a minute. If we know that the enemy's goal is to scatter God's people, how important is don't forsake the fellowship for you now? For for those that, that, that have created a doctrine of, I don't have to go to no church. How do you feel about that when you know the enemy's goal is for you not to be able to go to church? That's very nice. Think about that. You automatically God is. Go ahead, brother Look, James. Go ahead. I was gonna say you automatically helping him out already. Hey, whatever God say, the devil is for the direct opposite. If God wants us to come together, the devil will say, "I don't want you to come together." Daniel is telling us one of the things that will be done first 
is God's people will be scattered. How many of y'all know we weaker when we're apart from one another? Very few of us have the faith that you can walk this walk if you didn't have nobody else to walk with you. I'm, 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 but that's just yeah, a fact. When, when we're in a group where two or three are gathered, oh, two or three are gathered? Oh, boy. Brandon, you, Gershom, and Rod, y'all some criminals. But boy, together, y'all y'all strong when y'all together, right? But if you separate the three of you, you see what I'm saying? Y'all keep each other encouraged. Now we men of God. Now we don't move like that. And y'all y'all keep each other encouraged. Y'all accountability partners. But man, but when we get scattered. Amen, bro. And what I want y'all to know, the Bible is telling us this is one of the things that that power is going to try to accomplish. Once I have scattered them, then it is finished. Go ahead, Sister Bria. I just was going to say real quick, um, I think people don't have an issue with assembling. It's just the mindset of being mature in the mind when dealing with our brothers and sisters um, within the body. You know, I mean, that's what really keeps a lot of people away a lot of times. But the idea of coming together as far as, you know, I don't think people don't mind doing it. It's just that when you come, and those that don't really know the word or those that may be immature um, in Christ, it just it just be, you know, like a, a big blow over a lot of times. I, I have to say, I agree with you uh, on some points, what you said, sis. That's that's one scenario, um, which is true. But when it comes to not fellowship, you got it. It's, it's, that's a big umbrella where we would have to cover on reasons why people, but it's just it's a that's a big thing today um of like this private worship and and we all should have private worship but god is big on us being together so but yeah what you said that's that's true as well so watch this y'all verse number eight so daniel said i heard what they said he said but i didn't understand what it meant verse eight he said so then said i oh my lord then what shall be the end of these things? How do I know when the end shall be? Verse 9 says this. He said, go your way, Daniel. Go where I told you to go, Daniel. For the words are closed up and what? Sealed Seal to the end of time. To the time of the end. Very good. This brings us to Revelations. And we're going to start at chapter 6. And understand, y'all, what I'm sharing with you guys it's just a small glimpse of it. We're not digging into it as deep as we could. Um, because the, the the goal or the the big picture of what we want to accomplish on what we're talking about um tonight is the horsemen, things that God said will happen in the last days, the time of tribulation. And if we're tripping over getting along. Uh, sit down talking to your brothers and sisters, making peace with one another. When we have a time coming like this, if we can't run with the footman, meaning stop bickering with one another, learn how to sit down and be mature and talk it out. Learn how you don't even have to agree, but you can still be cordial. Amen. Yes, Amen. Yeah, amen. Yes, ma'am. Mama, Mama said we need to be praying for one another and showing each other love. Why? Because it's going to be a time like what we're talking about now. And if we are giving up and throwing in the towel during this time of footman, do you really believe you're going to run with the horseman? This is the time to train ourselves to be in subjection to God's word. Like Amen. I told y'all, nobody is touching you for trying to obey yeah. God. There's going to come a time it's going to get physical. Yeah. Amen. So watch this. Brother Ben, read verse 1 and 2 for us. Yes, sir. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat on him had a, had a bow, and a crown was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. So now let's talk about this part right here. And when I, I and I saw when the lamb opened the seals, I need to go back one chapter. I think I can find it pretty quick. 
Uh, here we go. Read verse one through three. I want y'all to understand how serious this sealed book is. Read and verse I, one through three. Yes, sir. And I saw in the right hand of them that sat on the throne a book written within and the backside sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to, and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. Okay, so y'all, let let me slow down. Let me see if we can put all of this together. Y'all know Daniel was a prophet, right? Why was Daniel's prophecy so powerful? Y'all remember how powerful the prophecy was that he gave to Belshazzar? Mm-hmm. Because everything came to pass. Yes. And, and what he said, y'all, he said, this vision I'm about to tell you, Belshazzar, it's going to tell you about from now until hereafter. In other words, I'm about to... To t your dream was about what was going to happen in Earth's history from where you are, Belshazzar, all the way to the end of the world. In other words, Daniel was shown the course of the world and what would go on all the way to the end. All right? And so when we read in Daniel 12 a while ago and God was giving him more insight about the end times, God told him, Take the vision, put it in this book, and seal it until when? The time of the end. So now that we're in the time of the end, look what he's saying about this book. He said, I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside, and it had been sealed with what? Seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is even worthy to open up this book and to loose the seals of it? He said, and no man in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to even open the book, neither to look their own. But watch what happens in verse four and five. Come on. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look their own. And one of the elders said unto me, weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it, it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book, out of the hand of him that sat upon the throne. Amen. So now we see why in chapter 6, Jesus was the one worthy to open the book. Because remember, it had been sealed. And so now when we go to chapter 6, y'all, and we read verse 1 and 2, so we, we're, we're being basically, y'all, through John, we're being shown some things that a vision of heaven. And again, remember, notice the words that is used. And notice it didn't say, and I saw when Jesus opened the seal. Notice it used Old Testament verbiage. That's why I was telling y'all the other day that you kind of got to know the lamb is Jesus, all is the Holy Spirit, wine or blood is suffering the blood of Jesus, you have to kind of know um, these little key words. So as you read it, you can get the spiritual meaning of it. Remember, he said he was going to take away the daily sacrifice. Well, in the Old Testament, they had to sacrifice animals every day. In the New Testament, we find we must die daily. We are sheep for the slaughter. You understand? So the, the daily sacrifice was really talking about us. Say so they're going to bring down the sanctuary. We know ye not that ye are the temple of God. We are the sanctuary today. The attack is talking about God is us. But a person that haven't studied, man, they would be looking for some building to get tore down. You got me? 
So watch this. He said, and I saw when the lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, and it was the noise of thunder, and one of the four beasts saying, come and see. Now, y'all, these four beasts is not talking about the kingdoms. It's talking about the throne of God that you first hear about in Ezekiel chapter 1. Okay? And I can't remember what chapter it is here in Revelations, but it also gives you another depiction of the throne of God, the throne that 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 God supposedly rolls, rolls, moves around on. Y'all heard the preacher say the wheel in the middle of a wheel before? It, it, it was it was show, it was painted. I don't have time right now. A lot of eyes. Yes, and all of those eyes, but it, it paints a picture of the throne that that carries God around from one place, and they talk about it move like this. Mm -hmm. All right. So watch this. He said, Behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow. I don't know who it is sitting on him. You know, I'm going to do some more study and see if I can figure it out, but it doesn't change the point. He said, And he had a crown was given unto him. So that right there is pointing me to Jesus. He says, And he went forth doing what? Conquering and to what? Come. And the okay, that doesn't tell us a lot, but we know whatever he's going on, he's going somewhere, and not only is he getting victory over something, but he is conquering. Verse number three and four, this is the second seal being opened, and notice what it says up here. This is war. Come on. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, come and see. Okay. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. Mm, does that ring a bell for any of us? As far as what's going on in the world? The wars, the rumors of wars. Okay. Think not that I have come to bring peace. At the end of the world. If People they hate you, right. remember they hated me first. They should throw, take you to encrypt you in prison, take you before the synagogues, before governors, and kill you for my name's sake. Mm -hmm. Did this sound for me? Yeah, we're gonna be persecuted. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. And there was given unto him a great sword. I come to divide. Remember the word was compared to a sword? It said that he can just separate the what? Bone from the what? Marrow. From... Wait, what did you say? From the marrow. Oh, yeah. Think not that I come to bring peace. I come to separate the mother from the daughter. How? The word of God can separate a mother and daughter. The word of God can separate a father and son. If the father really accept Christ, but the son don't, when the father has to stand on the word, it'll have him at odds with his son when he wants to participate in something the father can't because of the word. It'll put a division between them. Amen? Amen. Amen. So he came and he took, so that's why he said, think not that I have come to bring peace, but a what? Sword. Cool. I come to separate. Amen. Yes, sir. Uh, Deacon Ray. Oh, I, oh is that also going to be the time where, where so-called Christians going to be thinking that they're doing God a favor when they bring, you know, the true people of God before uh, the council and everything to be persecuted, and then by the sword also. You know what, Deacon Ray, man, let me study some more. I'm gonna tell you, I'm the reason why I say no right now is because what we're gonna see when we get down to the sixth seal. Gotcha. Um, I think the sixth seal deals with what you're talking about. I think here in this seal, and like I say, y'all, this is prophecy, it takes a lot of studying. Um, um, so I'm not going to act like I know it like the back of my hand, y'all. I'm just speaking on what I'm sure of. I'm, I, what I'm trying to bring out of it is the tribulation and the things that we will see that is being told to us prophetically. And I'm just trying to encourage us that if it's going to get that serious, we need to grow up 
doing our footman's race and do better on the things God expects for us to be able to accomplish. Because why? Those things are preparing us for these times. Okay. So, but yeah, but but keep that thought, uh, Deacon Ray, because and you'll understand why I say I think that's more under the sixth seal when they thinking they're doing God a favor. Um, so this yes, is the third seal. It says family. Come on. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third be say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he had uh -huh. set on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard the voice in the midst of the four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny. And see, thou, and see, thou art not the oil, excuse me, see, thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Okay, so y'all look at the screen if you're not looking at it. I'm going to highlight your hints. I'm going to highlight your hints. First hint is what I have highlighted here. He said the black horse and the man that sat on him had a pair of balances. That's one hint, one hint for you. The other hint is, he says, see that you don't hurt the all and don't hurt the what? One. Y'all got that? Don't hurt the all, neither hurts the wine. What comes to mind when you see a pair of balances was in his hand? The balances are the scale. Go ahead, and brother. And it's it's uh, somebody's coming to bring justice. Okay. What's being weighed? Good and evil. Okay. All right. My brother said good and evil. I work. I say what you know versus what you what you did what you did. Hey, very good. The you word know? in your life? Yes. That's what I was going to say. What you knew versus how you live. Like on when he was talking to Belshazzar and the writings on the wall. Yes. So, okay. So now keep this. So we all can agree that this is the, the, the balance beam is basically a form of judgment. Have you been living what you know? They that know to do good and do it not. It's, it's, it's a saying to God. Yes, he told, uh, was it Belshazzar, you have been weighed in the balances, and you have what? Come up wanting. How are you going to do this after you've seen how I handled your grandfather for doing the same thing? Right? So the balance being basically is a form of judgment. If you got an equal balance, that's, that's what the balance beams are symbolic of, judgment. You know, do you have equal weights? All right? Now watch this. Let's add to it. He told the angel, he said, I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny. And watch this, see not, or see thou, that you don't hurt the oil or the wine. Make sure you don't hurt the oil. Make sure you don't hurt the wine. What in the world is he saying don't hurt? Those who are sealed. Okay. Come on, Brother Montreal. Uh, yeah, what she said, but more specifically, he's saying don't hurt the ones who got his Holy Spirit because that wine, that, that the, all represents the Spirit. Where the wine come in at? Blood. The, the blood of Jesus. But what the blood of Jesus got to do with us? We cover. How? That's the right church answer, but how? By the way we live. Uh, Keeping his commandments and testimony. Yes. Let's say it in a better way, a more a lameness term so everybody can get it. We all know that when you obey God, you suffer for it, don't you? Amen. Y'all remember when we take communion and he told us to judge ourselves and make sure you don't take this how? Unworthy. In vain. Unworthy. 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 You don't suffer for this. You don't suffer. You eat the bread, but you don't, you're not suffering for this word. The blood is symbolic of, the wine is symbolic of the blood, and the blood is symbolic of the life. The life is symbolic. How you know you living for Christ is when you suffer for Christ. The Bible said this plainly. Anybody that's going to live godly will what? 
So, so. so if you call yourself a believer, but you don't suffer, just denying yourself daily, dying daily is suffering, is it not? Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 So he told them, don't touch the ones that have the spirit, the oil, just like the virgins. And they have wine. What? They suffering. Don't touch them. You know, some Pastor James. Yes. And that, that communion, that, that communion is so serious. When people don't understand what comes with applying this word, it's just the juice and a piece of cracker to you. And a lot of people feel like they're doing something when they just come to church taking communion. What is it for? What are we doing? Is it showing in our lives and in the way and on the way it can show if we out here working? Watch this. You just said something, Brother Jay. I don't know if you realize how, how good it was when you said how serious this communion is. Y'all, if y'all notice this third seal is about famine, right? Don't you know if we have been judging ourseles doing communion, maybe making sure that we have been listening to the Spirit and obeying Christ and we suffering for it, that would have had us ready for this because we would have had all and wine and God had already prophetically said, don't touch those. Now you really understand at a deeper level, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. What keeps them from it? They have the evidence of the oil and the wine. That's how I know they mind. They have the seal. They got that tattoo that say they're part of this. Amen. So it's, boy, like you said, Brother Johnny, I don't know if you meant it to that level, but it is, man, to take communion right, you don't even, you wouldn't even know it's this serious, but boy, it would have you ready for third, this third seal. Oh, yes. It had me out here, oh, yes, and I feel a little bit, I feel a little bit of it when I'm out here having to lose my voice talking to people, especially when somebody say something by my Lord. Amen. I ain't saying nothing all day until you disrespect me. All right. So come on, brother Ben, pick up at the fourth seal. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, come and see. And I looked and behold, a pale horse and his name that sat on him was death and hell followed him, followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beast of the earth. Okay, so this fourth beast, this one's a little tough. We see it's a pale horse. The name of the one sitting on the pale horse was death and hell. That word hell is 80s, which means the grave. Said in power was given unto him, unto them, I'm sorry, these two, over how much of the earth? A fourth part of the earth to do what? To kill, kill with the sword. With what else? Hunger, death, and with the beast of the earth. Y'all, what? Is, so this is in a fourth part of the world. Don't know if it's all together in random places. And then that word sword, that, I, you know, we got to understand it's prophetic. It could be guns. It could be, you know, because we don't see people literally fighting with swords anymore. But what we do see is people are dying by weaponry. We see people dying from starvation. Okay. And I'm going to tell you, that hunger thing, that gets my attention. You want to know why? Don't forget what happened to our grocery stores during COVID. Oh, the winter storm warning. <laughs> so, so let me show y'all something. Let me show y'all something. I want y'all to think about something. During the COVID thing, what we saw, when we saw our grocery stores, I don't know when the last time you've been to Walmart to see the, the shelves so empty. You know? Now, thankfully, it seems like before it got bad, they would get something in and they would just clear them right back out within two or three days. You kind of had to know when the truck was coming in, right? 
But what if the truck stopped coming? What do you think citizens would do? And it's panic. And so those of you that had 20 packages of toilet tissue, 40 packages of chicken on your basket, do you really think in a time like that you're going to make it through the self-checkout? And nah, them people would beat you down in there, so... It's going to be on, ain't it, son? You're going to have... Listen. Come on, Brother Warren, listen to me. I'm talking about regular people that are good citizens any other day of the week. But because they got family members at home hungry and you and you being... They feel like you being greedy. Ain't thinking about nobody but yourself. Man, that, it's, it'll get ugly, y'all. That's the, that's when that's that thing when you think you it's kind of like Pastor Jane, what I'm thinking about is you know how somebody could be in the walk and we follow all the spirits then when you think you somewhere you're not the heat got to get turned up just a little bit more to show who you with right there the amen. heat just gonna turn up a little more amen and that's so y'all learn that you know, right so y'all even though I can't discern to you the exact details of how this rolls out but I know when people get hungry. And, and you got people getting killed. It says kill them with death. I don't know if that's illness or, or what. You know, I probably should look it up and see if maybe it gives more detail on what it's talking about. It just says kill with death. What was it really talking about? Let's look at that word and maybe 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 the word that gives us more details. Um, it just says death. It doesn't. Um, Death of the body separate. They're just different ways it uses. I didn't know if maybe that was illness. So you know, I guess it's just saying some people die. Uh, let me get out of here. Come on, computer. Um, and killed with the beast of the earth. So they're talking about being killed by animals. Go ahead, Sister Levine, and then Brother Ben, we're going to pick up at this fifth um, seal. Sir, okay. All right, it, it was me. Oh yes, sir. Go ahead. You know, you know I kind of um uh, think about that. Kind of puts into my think about what uh, self preservation, how far it goes, mm -hmm. because when we when we get to like you said earlier a few minutes ago, talking about how when COVID hit and how when things hit, how people quickly run to the stores to get what they need. I think about during that time, you know, what I mean, when you get hungry enough, you sell out your own your own loved ones to just be able to have a morsel of, of, of food to eat. Yes. So I, I kind of think of nothing about that, you know, especially during that time when we're being persecuted. If it comes down to, if you don't have the faith of God to the to the utmost, you're going to sell out everybody just to be able to have something. Amen. Amen. And, and remember, the goal is to scatter God's people. And I'm going to tell you, man, like, boy, people start getting hungry and folks dying. And let me tell you something. When we have weak faith and we didn't understand God told us in advance it's going to get ugly, We'll feel like, yes, mom, we'll feel like God not protecting us from this. Man, what am I holding on? What am I trying to live this for? Obviously, God ain't real. You see what my, my mama's going through? You see what my kids are going through? Like, God, come on here. People would throw in the towel, man, when it appears that God is not protecting us from what he said had to come. Well, hey, Amen. And what I want us to understand, what God wants us to know, I'm telling my people times like this are coming in advance because when you don't deny me in times like that and you hold on to me, do you know how easy and you are blessing me and making it easy for me to kill the wicked when my children suffered such things for my name's sake and you jokers wouldn't even stop lying for me? What a man. See, the wicked ain't going to put up with no stuff like that for one second. They believe in an eye for an eye. They believe in, I got to get mine. They 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 have a selfish, uh, 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 a, a flesh-pleasing spirit. God's people have been trained to think of others first, even under pressure. You, you have, listen, brother and sister, you got to train yourself to think this way. It will not just happen. Amen. You got to practice it. Come on, uh, Brother Troy. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say, uh, just hearing you say being trained, 
and thinking about being hungry and everything, it made me think about us fasting and how he, through the fast, he preparing us. Like, that's what it's all about, us fasting to put away for the table and everything and, like, keeping the Sabbath and everything. It's teaching us self-control for that time. Yes, the nine. You know, we be thinking, yeah, we were like, why you? Why we got to do this and why we got to do that? Like, he preparing us for this time, for that time. Yes. Because he know that time coming. And if we practice it now and train our, our body now, we'll be ready. Yes, yes, amen. Because fasting does teach you, I got to perform the word of God even when I'm suffering. It does train you, yes. Go ahead, Sister Francesca. Uh, Brother Troy said what I was going to say. And also just to add to that, as we continue to get in the habit of fasting, we'll find that spirit really does sustain us to where we actually got to tell ourselves to go on and eat. And you'd be surprised to where you say, oh, I wasn't even hungry because you mm -hmm. find yourself fulfilled. But yeah, he said what I was going to say. Hey, man. Hey, man. So you know what, Deacon Ray, now that I'm looking at this fifth seal, what you said, Deacon Ray, about them thinking they're doing God a favor and stuff like that, I could be wrong, y'all. Let me study more. But I think it falls under this fourth seal. I'm going to tell you why. So Deacon Ray mentioned, you know, them killing the saints and stuff and thinking they're doing God a favor. You know, you won't be able to buy and sell and stuff like that. Remember all of that? Right? So that'll make yeah, it. Yeah, the market be. You can't, you can't buy nothing to eat. Okay, so now watch this. Watch what happens in the fifth seal. Come on. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they had. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, does thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little while, for a little season, until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Okay, y'all, let's get this. We got two groups of people right here. Now, my Sabbath school class, y'all better not miss this answer. Now, watch this. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them are the people that have been killed for what reason, y'all? For living for Christ. For the, the word, word of God. God. And the testimony. And the and testimony. The testimony. Brother Warren, they held on to that word and they had a testimony of how they held on to it. They was killed for it. Amen. Where did they see him at? I saw under the altar. Because remember, he's looking in the heaven. I saw under the altar, the temple in heaven, the souls of them that were killed for the word of God and the testimony that they held. Watch this in verse 10. He said, in these group of people, they cried with a loud voice saying, how long, O Lord, holy and true, do you not judge and avenge our blood Against them that's still on the earth. Who are these people? I think those are the, uh, you talk the people that's talking to them. Yes. Those are the 24 elders. The right. artists, Stephen and them. I think it was the people that rose up with Jesus. I think it was the people that rose up with Jesus the first time, the first fruit. But Jesus looked up to his dad. I think that's what it is. I think that's them. All right. So, Sister Francesca, let me tell you why it can't be Stephen. Can't be Stephen because Stephen hasn't been resurrected yet. How do you know? Uh, he was after the first fruit. That's right. There you, there you go. Do y'all remember when Jesus died and when he got up? Do y'all remember all of those graves that were open? Yes. Amen. But I want y'all to understand the Bible said it is promised to man that for us to only have to die. How many times? One time. One, one time. So these people that got out of the graves had already died their first death. And they got up with Jesus. And remember, they were seen all over the city. Because the Bible can't lie, we know they didn't have to die and go back to the grave again. So where do you think they went? The New Jerusalem city. They went back there. Yes. They had to. 
They, listen, let me tell you how you know. Use your common sense. You know they can't still be alive. No, they can't go to heaven. Watch this. No, they had to go to heaven, sis, because watch this. The new Jerusalem. We know this is 33 AD, because that's when Jesus died, right? Now watch this. They were already in the grave in 33 AD when Jesus got up, which means they had died their first death. Mm -hmm. right. All right. So the Bible said when Jesus got up that it was a lot of graves open and mm -hmm. these people were being seen all over the city. Amen. They were resurrected, right? Yes. Okay. You only got mm -hmm. one or two options. First option, they still walking around today. Second option, they died again. If they died again, then the Bible is a lie. And you know that's not true. No, that ain't true. They, 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 they ain't died again. So mm -hmm. ain't but one place left for them to go. When Jesus went back, this is them. They went with them. They went with them. Amen. Now, hello, somebody. Amen. The All right. Lord. So now watch this. They, we know for them to get up with Jesus, they had to have stood on the word and they had to have a testimony. That's the only mm -hmm. way to be a saint. Yes. And they asking Jesus, how long is it going to be before you get these people back that killed us from holding on to the word? And watch what he says in verse 11. White robes were given unto and I'm sorry, and white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest for a little season, get this, y'all, until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be what? King. How? Just like they was. Hallelujah. Should be fulfilled. I can't do, I can't rem remember Jesus said, vengeance is mine. Mm -hmm. I can't get them back until your fellow servants and brothers get their testimony too. They're going to kill them too. Mm -hmm. Y'all. That's us. That's us, brother Mike. Mm -hmm. That's how we make it. We need that testimony. See, when I know I, oh, listen, listen to your brother. Listen, do you know it's a blessing? If you get to go to sleep in Jesus versus being killed. Yeah. Now, get what I'm saying, y'all. Let's just say, oh, Lord, you know, it hurt when people die. But boy, a heart attack is a blessing. Amen. I know that sounds crazy. But it's true. It's, it's a better heart than a car attack. accident. <laughs> Listen, oh, listen, J you just watch this. Just like we're trying to do right now. We're just trying to live for Jesus every day. We deny ourselves. We stand in the wheel. We really walking with the Lord. And we have a heart attack and some, we didn't get up. So we died in Christ of natural causes. Hey, right? Amen. But God is saying it's coming a time that because you're trying to live right every day, that they're going to single you out and kill you because you're trying to live right kill you because you're standing on the word and saying that that's wrong. Kill you because you're saying, no, that's against God, because you're standing up for God. How would you rather die? I want to go with my Lord. I'll Not take you. the heart attack for 500, Alex. <laughs> 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 Me too. <laughs> what I'm saying is, y'all, it's, it's horrible as a heart attack is, or a car wreck is, or, or, or Lord forbid, cancer. These things are horrible. But but that versus a gun to my head. Putting a cigarette out on standing out, standing up on the word. I That's, think the headshot will get you up out here quick, though, pal. It you gets you quicker, get it, it gets you quicker, but if your faith ain't strong, the fear of it may rock your faith. Amen. Hey, bitch, I mean. The fear of it, you know, if you don't come from that life, the fear of it may get cause you to mm -hmm. go against your faith. And that's what I'm saying. If God allowed you to just go to sleep in him, that was a blessing. Because he's saying it's coming a time 
that your fellow servants and brethren is going to be killed for the word of God like you was. That, that's why I keep saying, y'all, we getting to live for God right now and ain't nobody touching us. It's coming a time you're going to be touched for this word. So if you are talking about you don't want to talk to somebody, uh, I wish I would. You send up, man, do you realize how crazy you sound when you know it's going to get this bad? Hey, man. All you got to do is check yourself. And if you can't check yourself, how can you contend with this? Hey. Pastor James. Yes, sir. I have yet, man, look, this point, Paul, I think about when Paul was on his way to Rome and the brothers was crying because Paul was going to leave and he had to go. Stand before, mm -hmm. stand before the, uh, yeah. The, so Paul, they, they, Paul said, "Why are y'all crying? Y'all, you know, I'm ready to die." When I heard Paul say, "I said, boy, you got to be, you, your faith got to really be up there." For Paul, he said, "You know, I'm ready to die." I'm gonna tell you something, though, brother Johnny. And, boy, we can all, we can all get there if we go all in right now. The the walk, the walk for God just keeps you by nature. It ain't about me. You, I'm going to tell you something. When you really start doing it right, you feel dead way before you die. Ooh, amen. You know what I'm saying, Sister Wadney? You you like, yeah. like, it's like when God say, okay, I'm ready for you. You be like, all right, let's go. <laughs> yes, that part. You've been gone years ago. Like, I'm just glad you're done, Lord. I'm just letting you use me. And, and, and man, I've been tired, but if you're done with me, okay, I'm ready. But watch this, y'all. Amen. This is the last night of this, y'all. We're going to go to a different topic. Uh, come on, brother, being read 12 through uh, 17, and we done. So, y'all, this is the sixth seal. And I, be, and I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell into the earth, even as a fig tree casts unto untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind, and and the heaven departed as a scroll, when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. We we'll just stop right there, brother Ben. I tell you what I'm gonna do, y'all. We'll do this on. We're gonna finish with fifth seal and sixth seal on Tuesday next week, cause there's some more stuff in there I can show y'all. But the cool thing about it is, if y'all picked up on the sixth seal. We talk about the clouds rolling back. What do y'all know that time is? The that's, second coming. Oh, that's, that's Jesus coming. So, okay. So that means right before then, if that's the sixth seal, then that means right before then in the fifth seal, the saints are being killed. Right before Jesus come back, the saints are being killed. Amen. Yes. So, so watch this, y'all. Here's my question. If the saints are being killed... How is it a rapture before the end? Remember, it's taught the church is going to be raptured out. If they go on to heaven, how are they getting killed? Ah, uh, good question. Oh, because don't know about because most of the time, Pastor Jay, don't Listen, nobody want to remember the huh? There's some for us to chew on till Tuesday. Okay. Remember? Everybody that was on the Lord's side is supposed to be gone. Oh, come on here. <laughs> All right. Y'all ready to pray? Until Tuesday. All Amen. right. <laughs> now, if y'all feel way up out of here early, y'all make sure y'all don't be one of them. Y'all let me know now. <laughs> All right. Don't get sick of all of a sudden. Hey, okay. hey. Don't be trying to fly away on the comet, huh, Pastor? Yeah, uh, if, if, I leave, if I leave early, y'all got to leave. All right. All right. Come on, y'all. Let's pray, y'all. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in prayer, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to study a portion of your word, Father. We just pray nothing was said that's unpleasing in your sight, Father. And we just pray, Lord, that your spirit keep us until the next appointed time, Lord. Make our hearts right with you, Lord. And just bless us, Lord, that we may all hear you say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. We thank you for all you've done for us, Lord. And we ask these things in your daughter, son, Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good night, Amen. everyone. Amen.